Good morning and welcome, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and welcome to Tuesday. I know, it's, man, I feel like I've been off for a month. It was three days. I hope you all had a great uh, Labor Day weekend. We're going to have to be retrained. Uh, this is the second rendition of the Patriot Radio, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'll get it out. Uh, since we've made the change, uh, Jason's going to be joining me. Uh, remember, uh, we've got two more hours uh, after this program, and then uh, our new schedule. Go to 1360KHNC.com. You can hit the schedule part. You'll see it all. Alex Jones is moving up. Uh, we got Rick Rodriguez now four days a week. Uh, Leah, Leah live for a couple of hours uh, on the drive home. And so we got a lot of great things happening everywhere. Uh, just bear with us. We may hit a few bumps in the roads, but but we'll get it all worked out. Uh, Jason, how was your weekend? Did you do anything exciting? Uh, I did as, as least as I possibly could to uh, to get ready for. It. I was I was I was a lot of busyness here at the radio station uh, to get all these new shows up and ready, and I think it was a success. Everything seemed to shoot off right. Everybody was happy over the weekend. This show is shooting off right so far this morning, and then uh, <laughs> knock on wood, fingers crossed. A few more changes this week. We got Tehebo T, which comes on on Fridays at eleven o'clock. He'll be doing a live show. That'll be Milan. As long as that shoots off right, then uh, I'll be I'll be relieved. So yeah, I tried to do a lot of rest. I, I had some chores to do around the house, and you know yeah, yeah, the work. Yeah, the wor I didn't do a whole lot either. You know, some, we're empty nesters now, and I want to say at least half a dozen times over the weekend, my wife and I, one of us was like, "Man, we are boring." <laughs> <laughs> well, Joel, that, that was us this weekend. One we of the, were one of the very, things, very boring. Joey, one of the things I've been doing a little bit of, just at my own pace, is uh, you know we have, we have uh, Glenn Tate Prepper 2.0 on the weekend, and I don't consider myself uh, a, a Prepper 2.0, but I am sort of a I would call a Prepper 1.5. <laughs> I want to make sure because the, the world's getting weird around <laughs> this show. 1.5. Yeah, I, I, I do a little bit of that stuff, but I don't. I, I'm not. The, I'm not fully stocked, I guess. But I uh, there's some weird stuff going on, Joe, and I'm. Uh, I want to make sure that if uh, a few little minor emergencies happen, then I, I'm ready for it because there's uh, some crazy stuff going on. I will say you 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 don't know, and you're right. I. I uh... You know, as we were sitting there doing nothing all weekend, I want to say Sunday, I don't know that we left our house. I mean, that's how boring we were. But uh, you, you start looking at, uh, I don't know, have you heard about this Moo variant? And, and I'm sure we'll get into that the next hour. What variant? Uh, no, I haven't heard of this. What, what did you call it? The Moo variant? The, the Moo variant. Does that come from a cow? <laughs> <laughs> well, MU is what the uh, oh, okay. but my wife my wife assures me it's called the Moo variant, Moo and variant. it is supposed to evade the vaccinations. Oh boy! And it was in South Africa, like this time last week. Okay, yeah. on Thursday or Friday, there was some article came out said that uh, Hong Kong had three cases. Uh, and by yesterday, somehow it was in 49 states. Oh, boy. Boy, I trust, so, I trust that information, I, Joe. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just saying. You don't know, but I guess to your point, there are a lot of crazy things happening all over the place. Uh, but, but I'm sure uh, in the next hour, uh, we'll get Steve Mistral's take on it. Uh, we, we got a, a, a good show lined up for you today. We've got... Uh, ye bond yields rising today because nobody thinks the Fed is going to taper. Uh, we have gold and silver selling off this morning. Uh, obviously, our markets were closed yesterday. The rest of the world was open. Uh, everybody's back open today. Uh, we, we've we got GDP uh, forecast. Last week, it was Morgan Stanley Goldman Sachs dropping GDP forecast for the third time in like a, the last month. Uh, I'll get you that number. And then how about this one? This is how weird it's getting. The Federal Reserve Banks, a bunch of banks of the Federal Reserve. You know, we've got the New York Federal Reserve, the Atlanta Federal Reserve, the Chicago Federal Reserve. Like out here in the West, 
We have the San Francisco Federal Reserve. It actually oversees Colorado and Arizona in the West. They all have a GDP tracker. And I shouldn't say all of them, but a handful of them do the tracking for GDP. New York is one of those. The, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Apparently, they don't like the numbers. So the Central Bank of New York announced Friday that they're no longer going to track it, Jason. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to track it either if I was them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's evil left hand bad news, right hand worse news. You know, right? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe someone is like, you know what? Okay, we've got to mas- quote unquote massage the numbers so much that it's become ridiculous, and and they're not going to do it. They, but I I just thought it was interesting as the I guess the good GDP numbers have gone away. Of course. We got good GDP numbers because we just handed out trillions of dollars. But now that that's over, apparently they have no interest in tracking it anymore. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a harbinger of things to come. But I, I just have this feeling if GDP was going to be 5 6 7 8%, they would gladly do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Joe, I, I think they don't want to track a lot of things because uh, a lot of people are feeling it, Joe, that something's getting ready to happen. We talked about it this morning for a few minutes. Uh, you don't want to track stuff when things are getting ready to go uh, off the cliff, I don't think. Pizza Radio News Hour. Don't touch that dial. We'll be back right after the break. 800-951-0592. Pizza Radio News Hour. Joe Jaquin, Jason Walker here on this Tuesday. So... Uh, we're seeing GDP estimates get slashed everywhere. Uh, the latest was this morning, Goldman Sachs, who, j- just to tell you how quickly things have turned, uh, this is the third time that they've cut their GDP forecast as to what the third quarter is going to be. So the third quarter, July, August, September. So we're in the last month here of the third quarter uh, and they started out on August 18th they were at 8.5 percent Jason right so that was what three weeks ago right a little over three weeks ago they cut the forecast from 8.5 to 5.5 that's and a, we're like okay you wow, know that's a little nibble there <laughs> that, that that's 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 a little bit of, of a haircut. Uh, on, on September the 2nd, they cut it again from 5.5 to 3.5. Wow. Yeah. And, of course, remember, Morgan Stanley cut it to 2.9%. But now Goldman Sachs is saying fourth quarter GDP is going to get cut as well. They were at 6.5. They're they're now at 5.5. But we got a long way to go, you know, uh, for for Goldman. I think you're going to see all of these numbers continue to head in the wrong direction. And and why is this uh, critical? Why is this important? Because it actually sets up the worst case scenario for the Federal Reserve, which is we're going to have lower growth and higher inflation, right? That's a, right. a, a stagflationary cycle, uh, which is the last thing they want to see. And it's so funny because I want to read to you why the New York Federal Reserve said they stopped tracking GDP. So they just made this announcement on Friday. Suspension notification, it says. The uncertainty around the pandemic and the consequent volatility in the data have posed a number of challenges to the now cast model. And that's the model they use, GDP now, it's called. Therefore, we have decided to suspend the publication of the NowCast while we continue to work on methodological improvements to better address these challenges. 
And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, I see. The numbers, they hate them so much that they need to come up with a new way to lie to us. Right? It's just like inflation. Right? Yeah. They say 5.5%, but we know that's garbage. And now they come out and say, oh, you know what? We can't show you the GDP number because of, of, of COVID. I mean, COVID's been going on for almost a couple of years now. Well, just a you know, year and a half at least. And isn't it interesting that now is, oh, oh, well, we got problems with the data because of COVID. And I would, uh, I would say, and I know that the Delta variant, you know, has caused a few states to make a few restrictions. But by and large, Jason, wouldn't you agree we're about as open as, as we've been since the whole thing started? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, regional. Uh, for example, uh, last Friday, uh, Boulder County uh, went back to a mask mandate here, and uh, I, I was at a I was in Boulder County yesterday doing a little shopping, and uh, it didn't affect everybody like the first go around. But but half the you know it went from almost nobody wearing masks now half of everybody at the store is wearing masks. So I mean, so I, like I said, it feels like something's getting ready to happen. You talk about the move variant, it makes me think of uh, remember Revenge of the Nerds? Do you remember that movie? <laughs> There was the sorority. <laughs> Remember the sorority that they end up hooking up with the Omega Moose, right? <laughs> we got the Moose variant, right? And uh, well, I'm, you, I'm just, you just said it. You know, you know, they funny? don't want to track. They don't want to track. Uh, they don't want to track G, uh, G, uh, the, the gross domestic product because, well, because we, we can't do that because COVID. You know, you got to point the finger at the big uh, the big enemy in the room. There has to be the enemy, right? It's not our fault. We 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 didn't create it, and. And I will say this, so, you know, Jason and I talk every day. And, and this morning, and, and rarely do we talk about, we never talk about what we're going to talk about on the air. Uh, we talk about mostly radio stuff and this and that and the other. But this morning, our conversation this morning, both of us, something, something's happening. I, I don't know how better to explain it other than i think a, a, this next event the the next shoe to drop sure feels like it's going to happen a lot sooner than i thought i really thought we would get well into 2022 before we would get uh, some type of whether it be a major Wall Street correction or, you know, is it another lockdown or, or what may I, – I thought we had more time, Jason. And it's just all of a sudden in the last – well, maybe the last week, week and a half, and especially since Friday's jobs number, feels like something's changed. I think in the next five months, Joe, we're going to get ready to feel what transitory means fully. That's, that's what I think is going to happen. I was watching a sh uh, yep. I was watching a show uh, a YouTube video. I watch a bunch of YouTube guys, uh, and I can't remember the uh, it's a, it, it was uh, once again it's a prepper thing. And this guy was talking about he he sells the prepper stuff. He has you know he has a store where he sells the the stuff. So he was had this can of food, and of course he's talking about inflation. But he said, look, my suppliers told me by October fifteenth, and he said this is the majority because he said some of them are already raising the prices before then. But by October fifteenth, October twentieth, thirty percent. And he showed this can of food, this prep food, and he showed the new can, which is the exact same food with a different picture on it. He said, this one has 595 grams. This one has 540 grams. Price going up 15 to 30 percent, and there's 10 percent less food in it. I think transitory is going to last until February, and I, I do think they're going to taper hard January, February next year, Joe. I think they're, you know, they're gonna, this thing is just going to fly in the wrong direction early next year. Yeah, and you know what's so funny? Think about this. Because I've heard this from multiple sources. There's going to be a major surge in food prices this fall. And, and a variety of different reasons. Uh, but this is what all the, uh, all the people are saying. Uh, the people that are delivering the products to the restaurants, to the bars, to the supermarkets... Uh, the the owners of these bars and restaurants, the CEOs of major supermarket chains, 
are all saying the same thing over the weekend. Both Ford and General Motors said, hey, this computer chip problem is not going away. Now, this problem was supposed to end before the end of the year. And then they said, well, oh, well, early 2022. Now Ford and General Motors are like, hey, this thing's not ending at all, at least uh, for the next year. Then this morning, we, we know about the uh, backlog at all these ports, you know, like uh, the in California, our largest ports, you know, Long Beach, uh, L.A., uh, Oakland, record ships waiting to be unloaded. Uh, they, they said that they were going to catch up uh, before the fall. Now they're already saying, hey, this problem, this backlog, not going away. Uh, right now, the latest they're saying is sometime well into 2022. And, and it all kind of points to the same thing. This We're going to get another massive surge of inflation. I think Jason's absolutely right. Taper's coming. But not because... See, now the taper case was built around, oh, the economy's heating up. Right, the economy's heating up, and 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 they we we they should start tapering uh, because of that. Of course, we got that terrible jobs number. Of course, I told you a month before it happened that was going to happen, but the economy has definitely slowed down because we're just not mailing people checks. How long? Wh- when was the last check? Like six months ago. Right. Yep. Right. And, and now uh, so, some unemployment benefits, those extra $300 are coming to an end. That by the end of the year, you got to start paying your student loans again and all this other stuff. The economy has shifted gears. So the last thing they're going to want to do is take away even more stimulus, which is what the taper is. But they know they can't raise rates, but they're going to have to do something, Jason, to make it appear like they're trying to fight the inflation. Yeah, I think they're trying to uh, inject uh, more free money slowly instead of uh, regularly. And they're trying to just kick the can down the road another one or two kicks, I think, Joe. And, uh, you know, it's, a... how many, it's like how many licks to the center of the uh, Tootsie Roll pop? Correct. Uh, we're running out of kicks. We're running out of kicks, Joe. And, I, and you know, I transitory to me means and if anybody's trying to figure out what transitory means the fed says two percent that's the inflation they want that's healthy stealing from you of two percent a year three percent a year if you look at the decade of the 2000s it's basically nine percent and gold has gone up ten percent for the entire 2000s that's 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 what we're looking at as that's sort of the normal uh what's gone on uh for the last 20 years but this transitory joe i think it's it's uh it's trying to see if they can uh get another couple of years or five years, four years. I mean, look, they, they had quantitative easing. They, they gave the money to the banks, and, and they gave, bought them about 10 years. But now they're giving the money to the people because giving the money to the banks is going to work this time. And I, th- I think what they're looking at with transitory is, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, have 25% interest from the end of 2020 to the beginning of 2022. I think you see 25%, Joe. And then and then they'll and then they'll taper and throw an interest rates up whatever they have to do to uh, in the middle of a, a a market meltdown this will be their this will be the way they're going to fix it and there's going to be chaos and they'll point it at coronavirus and every other enemy in the world but what we'll see is just between that late 2020 to the early 2022 that transitory is going to I think it's going to look at 25 percent on the average of everything that goes up minimum. And uh, I mean, I, I was so at, you're saying I was at the post office, just... Joe. One thing: I was at the post office just a few little while ago. And a cardboard box was seven dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> Something you could pick one up. box. You could pick that up at the behind the the, the, the liquor store for free, right? <laughs> the post office is selling that box well, for seven dollars. I, I, I won't cents. tell you how expensive shipping has gotten. You know, we we made the switch to to FedEx because we can ship less with FedEx than we can in the post office. But I'm talking. Boxes, tape, uh, the, what you get charged because you know our our boxes come in a. It's a big box. I mean, it's a you know probably three feet 
you know, across and 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 maybe two feet high. I mean, and, and you're talking two, three hundred dollars. Doesn't weigh a lot. Just takes up a lot of space on the UPS truck. Uh, you know, we we've been uh, shipping. You should some of the shipping charges we get. It, it's incredible. But I want to highlight some. So you're saying you think inflation is going to be as high as twenty five percent? I think the, yeah, the prices of goods and services late last year to the beginning of next year. I think twenty five percent. So yeah. from late last year. So we've already had. Uh, a big surge, right? So yep. we've probably done half of that. You know, I know the Fed only says, you know, 5.5%, but it's probably closer to somewhere between 12 and 15. So you think we got another doubling to go? As a minimum, yeah. yeah as a 800 951 Pizza Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 951 Patriot Radio News Hour. You know what would be interesting? You know, we're talking about uh, where we are headed. Uh, Ford. Chip shortage could, t- could continue through 2024. So when you sit here and you, in, and you hear Jason say, hey, we're going to have 25% inflation. Now, caveat there from starting towards the end of 2020 so we've already seen I'll I'll call it wave one right we've already seen wave one and now the groundwork for the second wave is is starting to uh, materialize because the one thing they've been talking about well transitory right yep of course transitory to them just means hey, prices are just going to stop going up. One of the things they've used is car prices. Obviously, car prices through the roof. And they were saying that because, oh, well, the chips are going to be back in a couple of months and and it'll all be fine. Well, the chips aren't going to be bad. Just like the port problems aren't fixed. And... When we start to look at how they've been manipulating inflation lower, they're running out of ways to hide the rent problems. You know, remember I told everybody, you know how they track it now? They don't take home prices. They don't take actual rent. They call people that, that own a home. They don't rent anything. They don't, it's not like they own multiple homes and they rent. No. And then they ask them, hey, what would you pay in rent? To rent your house. And then they use that number. Which makes absolutely no <laughs> sense. But here's the thing. I think a lot of people, Jason, are starting to get educated. Yes. Because the the rent numbers they're starting to give are starting to rise. And this is going to blow the whole lid off of the inflation problem. The whole thing. Yep. But you said something very interesting. You're saying they're not just going to taper. You think they're going to start raising rates? Sometime next year. Yeah. Well, John, and like I said, it could be 50% inflation. One of the things is I don't really believe the scarcity that's out there. I mean, it's being a true scarcity. These guys are control monsters. They want they, they have every detail of everything ready. They, they're ready for all emergencies. Talk about preppers. These, 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 these globalists, they are ultimate preppers. And, and if, if their Ponzi scheme's getting weak, they got to figure out ways to keep selling it to us. And then they got to point the fingers at all the bad stuff at something else. Uh, I think it's false scarcity, Joe. I, I think they've created you this. You bring up a great point. You yeah. bring up a great point, right? Automobile sales, they've fallen by $5 million annualized. If this keeps up, we're going to sell $5 million less cars than we did a year ago. Two years ago, three years ago. So it would stand to reason that we would have a chip surplus, not a chip shortage. Right. Right? Yeah. But yet here we are. Well, and Joan, what, what would be the aim if, if, if you go down that line of, of it, they, uh, they control this? Why, why, why have inflation, let's say, let's say it actually goes to 50% by next year, I mean over 2020. Why do that? Well, because there's less businesses to tax. There's less people that have the ability to earn income to tax. So what do you do? 
you make everything 50% more expensive so that you gain all that tax revenue back from the people that aren't working because you're moving into a modern system that's more automated. That's why you inflate things. You, you got you to keep that, those revenues, you got to keep on buying up everything and taxes is the best way they do it. Well, we, we've said this a lot. In order for the, the Ponzi scheme to keep going, you know, think about uh, where, where's our national debt? We don't even know. Debt ceiling time. Somewhere, somewhere t- between 29 and $30 trillion. Right? The Fed's got a balance sheet of somewhere around $9 trillion. So let's just back of the napkin. Let's call it $40 trillion. That's just on a federal level. I didn't think about uh, all the loans, the housing loans, the commercial real estate loans, and, and even college loans and all of that stuff. The only way it continues is those debts have to somehow be worth more. Yep. But, but what you're saying to me is they're getting ready to bring the whole thing down. To a certain, yeah, to a certain level, yeah, they got they got they got to keep the revenue <clears throat> going at the right place, Joe. And taxing is a great way. I mean, they got they got their taxing president in now. You know, Joe Biden's going to do everything he can to raise those taxes. And you raise taxes in in the in, the, in an inflationary cycle, you're getting, you're going to bring in more revenue for the, what you're losing. Let's face it, there's a lot of people aren't working, so that income tax ain't coming in. So if you raise the prices on everything, Joe, well, it's a percentage on on consumption, right? And you go to Walmart, if everything's fifty percent more, that's fifty percent more tax money you bring in and that's how you fund this this debt money system is you have the debt the higher the debt goes the more taxes you pay to service that debt which keeps them in, in pole position which is in control I, that's just just the way it is it's just the way, it's just the way it is the system is built this way they got all these little uh, ways of 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 snaking around the, the narrative and have coronavirus or 9-11 terrorists or whatever you know you know all, all the distractions of people being on this side or that side, and then uh, suddenly you you have less money in your pocket. Your your standard of living's gone down, and what do you do? You you blame the guy you're mad at because he's politically different than you. That's 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 the game they play. That's exactly well, and right. really if you if you think about it, according to the Fed, we only had a two month. What do you want to call it? Recession. I mean, we, we couldn't even really categorize it as a recession because you have to have two quarters, two straight quarters in a row of negative GDP growth. And when you think about what, what COVID did last year, and for them to say, hey, we, we really didn't have a recession at all. It's kind of like a fake crash. Right? It was a fake crash. And they pumped all of this money in, and then they kept pumping it sooner or later. We're going to get that recession. Yep. And I think this is this is probably what it feels. This is what the change feels like. Uh, we went, uh, my wife and I, and I told you, man, we did nothing this weekend. But we did, we did go to the store. We went to the store yesterday. And we bought nothing. I mean, <laughs> literally nothing. It's just me and her. I mean, we're, we're trying to figure out how to just buy for two people. And we had uh, our two boys. They ate f- for multiple people. Right? They, 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 they were always very active. They needed a lot of calories, blah, 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 blah. The cart was practically empty. $120. And I looked at my wife and I said, what the heck did we buy? We didn't buy any alcohol. We didn't even buy any meat. It's crazy how expensive things have gotten. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe Jaquin, Jason Walker. Yeah, something's up. Something. I don't know what. I don't like it. I'll tell you this. I don't like it at all. I think the Fed is put themselves in a... A very bad spot. We've been talking about the inflation problem for a long time. You know, think about, go back to when Jason said all of this really started. Fall of 2020. And the Fed, remember, people forget Jason. You know, gold touched 2100 bucks. That's right. 
I want to say August of 2020. And then gold fell all the way down to 1600 and change. Why? Well, because Jay Powell came out and denied there even was inflation. He says, oh, no, it's, it's, it's just a little blip. It's going away. It's going, don't worry. And then 2021 rolls around. And people are starting to worry. Gold comes off the bottom. And Jay Powell says, oh, it's just transitory. Right? Changes his tune. Transitory. Right? Transitory. Right. And, and, of course, that, that, that uh, got some people excited. And then throughout the summer, remember the boring summer where they kept saying transitory? Yeah, oh, uh, it's a little more than we thought, but, you know, it's still transitory. And then we got those hot jobs numbers. And everyone thought, you know what, hey, let's just believe them. Inflation is going to go away, and, man, the economy's red hot. So, yeah, we're going to taper. And, hey, we may even have to raise rates, not because of inflation. No, because the economy. Look at it. Now, of course, second quarter GDP was supposed to be 8.5%. I think it came in at 65 Still, big number for America. And now, all of a sudden, The GDP miracle is fading. Yep. The transitory line is starting to wear very, very thin. Yep. They could control and now all of Joe. a sudden, right? They, they could end inflation. All he has to do is just raise the interest rates. They know they, what That's they have it. to do. Right. Right. We've been saying all along, just raise rates. Tapers, tapers should have ended... A long time ago, according to their GDP numbers, why would you taper with an economy growing at six and a half percent? It made no sense. Yep. It made no sense. But again, either they believe their own ridiculousness with, oh, no, well, you know what? Apparently, we can just make money out of thin air, and it has no effect. And of course, I said it all the time. In that case, why not just give everyone ten thousand dollars a month? They know the rules. Of course, if you did they, that, they if know you the rules. did that, one trip to the grocery store when you bought nothing would be ten grand. That's right. Right. They know the rules, Joe. They know. They, you know we, it, it makes me ill every time I hear Jerome Powell talk about coronavirus. That's not his job. He can react to the markets because of coronavirus, but it, the coronavirus. Is, but he always has to talk about coronavirus. Now he's, he's so full of crap. They're so they're so stupid. Well, it, it's a great cover it. story. Yeah. Right, he's using that reason as to why it is that he is using idi it. Listen, it's not reckless. It is idiotic Federal Reserve policy right now. It's idiotic. And I told everybody, and I warned everybody, and I don't like it when I'm right to this degree. We needed to have been in fighting inflation a year ago. Instead, we still haven't done it. And most people expect Jay Powell next week to come out and say, I'm still not going to do anything. Right? And of course, as Jason said, it's going to be taper. Yep. That's actually not fighting inflation at all. We should have been fighting inflation decades ago. How's that? Well, they, they did a good job of tricking us on the number, right? They figured out a way. First, they did the substitution thing, right? Well, if beef's too much... You'll just buy chicken. You know, yeah. Now the problem is, well, it's, they're all going up. Well, apparently, you'll, you'll just buy dog food and call it good. We had a whole century, Joe, the 1800s, where there was no inflation. The $20 gold piece bought you $20 worth of stuff for an entire century. We should have been fighting inflation uh, three decades ago, but there were too many rich guys at the top of this banking system uh, just reeling in all of our assets and our time. But we're starting to see it, and man, you make a great point. This, and you know what inflation does? It makes a very small percentage very wealthy. There are twenty-seven hundred billionaires, 
And I think it was just a, uh, around 2008, there was only uh, seven, 600, I, I can't remember the exact number, 150, 200 billionaires. And then now, uh, you know, since, since quantitative easing, there's 2,700 billionaires. 27, and think about this. There's only 2,700 of them. That's right. Is that, now that's the world? Yeah. 2,700 of them in the world. I can't remember what it was, but like just 15 years ago, 10 years ago, before the, uh, the, the housing crash, I think it was like, I can't remember what it was, 700 or something like that, or, or 500, or some low number, 300. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, it's, it's, it's gone parabolic. Uh, the rich getting richer and, and uh, everybody else's standard of living going down. And, and that's what we see here, right? We have the great divide now, uh, less and less Americans owning homes. Less and less Americans can even buy a car. You know, we, we, we say, oh, we sold this. Many. How many of our leases, they rent them? They're, they're just glorified renters. And, and Jason, you, you said it for a while now. We're going to end up with a society where we own nothing and we're going to like it. Not me. I don't know if we're going to like it. <laughs> I'm not going to like it. Victor <laughs> yeah. Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. Don't touch that dial. 800 951 Patriot Radio News Hour. We got gold down. Well, it depends. I guess uh, from New York, because New York was closed yesterday, we got gold down $32, $1,800. Silver down $0.40, uh, $25. i am sorry, 2435 I know Kitco's got it down less because it was down a little bit yesterday. But the price is right. The price is where, what matters, uh, which is just giving you a great opportunity all right, on U.S. $20 gold today, back below 2100 So we had the big spike uh, on Friday, uh, some profit taking today. Uh, U.S. T- uh, $20 liberties, uh, 2095 2095 So you're saving, that's 30 bucks off. 2095 that's $30 less than it was Friday at 800 951 uh, we have about 15 rolls of rounds that we were running last Friday left, so we almost sold completely out of them. Uh, 15 rolls of rounds. They're still at $580 a roll on the silver side of things at 800 951 Well, man, right on cue here. Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, and uh, now Goldman Sachs say slumping consumer demand. Is going to take its uh, effect on third and fourth quarter GDP. Uh, Jason, we're starting to get uh, companies now lowering earnings estimations. Uh, Brown and Foreman uh, being the latest. They're a major alcohol distributor. Uh, they're, they're, they're having some issues. Uh, they're Jack Daniels as an example. Uh, just to name uh, one of them, but there's a whole list now, about 10 or 15 companies, PP&G. Uh, that's not a familiar name to most people, uh, but PP&G, big global conglomerate, uh, they, they said that they're going to have problems. Uh, they do a lot of the paints and things of that uh, uh, nature as well. Uh, Exilia Coding, Sherman Williams, RPM International, uh, let's see, Cummings is coming out, Black & Decker, Illinois Tool Works. Wow, the list uh, continuing to grow. So it's going to be a really, really, unfortunately, it's going to be an interesting fall in, in into winter, Jason. I think they may get one more burst of, of uh, we buying. We could, absolutely. I think, we they, I think they get that stimulus. a lot of money out there. I think they get that one more stimulus passed uh, by the, you know, somewhere around the, uh, the debt ceiling being hit. You get one more, you know, holiday season, let's just say, spending. But I don't think this stimulus is going to last very long. I mean, Joe, people should be buying gold. I mean, let's look at this real quick. In the early 2000s, I think you guys were selling $20 gold pieces for 250 bucks. A roll of... Well, I think, yeah, 300 Yeah, so, so well, okay, so a roll of 20 was $6,000. We sold Silver Eagles at one point this year at 800 for a roll of Silver Eagles. So if, if gold goes to twenty grand at the end of the year at the, at the end of this decade, which I think very easily it'll be there, you're talking about a roll of, of twenty dollar gold pieces being four hundred thousand dollars in a roll. You can buy a house today with that. So people really need to look at you know when you were buying uh, what would a roll about forty grand for a roll of those today, right? 
a little more than that. Forty. Grand. Yeah, r- right now, if you're buying a roll of twenty of them, it'd be forty one thousand nine hundred dollars. Something you could have bought for six thousand dollars in the in the early two thousands. And if you, if you think twenty thousand dollar gold, if people think that that's uh, that's that's a, a weird, uh, ridiculous number, and then the next year, coming years, you're you're out of your mind. It's, it's going there. They're not going to fix these things, Joe. They're going to keep pushing it. <laughs>